we've been wandering down the the by roads of HTML, XML, SGML, all sorts of MLs and various non-MLs. And last time I think we spoke, some people had wandered off to the pub and sorted everything out over a pint. So what happened about that then? What happened next? Well, after about 18 months, the draft XML specification was published and everybody agreed. Great job. Um, didn't we learn a lot from the decisions in HTML that caused so much difficulty? And of course, the major thing, not by any means the only one, but a big major thing, was that you must not omit your end tags in XML. They will be there. That being said, of course, a lot of browsers still have to be tolerant about it. Some people, you know, maybe, I don't know, Dreamweaver or something might produce a very, very good XML compliant web page, but a lot of people still hand code. A lot of people, particularly with paragraphs, go straight P, 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 and don't see the need to close off the paragraph. So you've got to be a bit tolerant. But nevertheless, the idea was you do not omit your end tags, and there were about seven or eight other rather more technical things had to be cleaned up from SGML, but it made a lot of difference to people implementing that they were cleaned up. One of the first ones I'm aware of, because I tend to forget it, is that um, in, SG, in SGML, because it was the days of punch cards, uppercase and lowercase were treated as the same. So if you called it para in capitals, it was the same as para in lowercase. Or even you could have capital P, little a, capital R, little a again, and that was the same as para, you know? That had to be cleaned up. So what this made possible was for the browser implementers, they loved it because it meant that if all the end tags were there, you could do a brackets matching operation, essentially a bit like in a compiler where you match open curly braids with closed curly braids. You could tick everything off and you could say, that is a tree. I may not understand what all the tags mean, but boy, they match all right. And now that's very useful to know about. So what it also meant was that there was a clean target for front-end software to aim at. The idea is that your Dreamweavers or whatever probably still aren't totally compliant, I don't know. But they could say, we will try and produce really good, nice XML. Um, X, yes, XML notated web page stuff. So what this really means is that a diagram that we had in the previous video can now be extended. You recall that I described SGML as being the enabling technology, the foundations of the building in a way, and we built these applications on top of them. I did a memo, I referred to the DOD's CALS, I referred to the Text Encoding Initiative, and I referred to HTML and say, you know, sad it had the L at the end, it caused so much misunderstanding. But anyway, let's just extend this a bit more now over to the right, and let us say that what the XML committee did was to enable, as it were, inside this SGML universe as a proper subset like that. And that one is labelled XML. And I've tried to draw it wholly within the SGML boundary to, to emphasise that, yes, it really is a genuine subset. The theologians would say, ah, yes, but it's a subset of the extended SGML that included several options that Charles specified way back and you had to have those in order for it to work. But nevertheless, yes, it is in spirit a proper subset. And that meant that you could generate on top of that new tag sets or cleaned up versions of existing ones. So one of the first things they did, of course, was to clean up HTML and its spec into XML format. Now remember, XML is a subset of SGML because they're the same things, they're metasyntaxes. Built now on top of XML notation is XHTML. Cleaned up HTML, all tags matching, defined, wonderful. And of course, several other people, tens of thousands of other people now, have been able to build their own tag sets on top of XML technology. Just to take one that's very familiar to, to me and to some of my academic co colleagues, for mathematics markup. 
Again, one wishes that they hadn't put the L on the end, but they did. Math ML. And ah, here's a good one. Adobe know what they're doing. You don't put ML on the end of things unless it's a meta language, perhaps. And they took their PDF technology and they made it so that it could be expressed in XML tag set form. And that, of course, is called Scalable Vector Graphics, SVG. And I'll put the dots here to show that there are now literally, I would guess, thousands, if not tens of thousands. Remember all of these, the way you refer to them is you say, SVG is an application of XML. Can we just be absolutely clear then, just to throw this in one more time, what was the big problem with putting L on the end of these? And because, unfortunately, the two enabling technologies end with ML. And the in crowd sort of say, we know. It says markup language, it's actually markup meta language. But of course, if you start using it for something that is a fixed tag set, not a tag set technology, punctuation rules, so to speak, then people start saying things like, oh, they're just, they're, you know, HTML is a subset of HTML. No, it's not a subset of HTML. It's an application, you see, and people start to make those mistakes between application and subset, motivated by the fact that they all end in ML, so they all must be the same sort of thing, and they don't. So, peace broke out. I think we should say that alongside all of this, in the mid-1990s, and equally important, it wasn't just getting XML sorted out and thereby being able to do HTML as XHTML properly. It was also the fact, I think, in that era, Tim Berners-Lee moved from CERN, he moved to MIT, and all credit to him, exactly the right thing. I think. Um, MIT made him an offer to host basically a sort of academic-like institution concerned entirely with setting standards for the web and being vendor neutral in everything it did. And as I say, all credit to him, he could have made millions out of the web, there's no question, but he opted to say, no, I would sooner make a smaller amount of money and be respected and to have mine be the standard way of doing things. So in a way, the uh, vendors can meet on vendor neutral territory, still have shouting matches and still have bust ups, but it's all under the aegis of the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, which is in charge of all this. I've never actually been to one of their meetings. I've talked to one or two people who've been there and I said, how do you cope with the fact that people still get subsets and applications confused, you know? Is XHTML a cut down version of XML? No, 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 no. And one said, I'm weary, I'm going bald, I've got a grey beard. All we try and ensure is that everything we say on our website is absolutely accurate and correct. But to try and get everybody in the whole world to understand and get it right, life's too short. HTML is a meta notation, memo is a specific tag set. And just to tell you I wasn't alone. Suddenly it's not that old is bad, all becomes good, right? So you have to have this set of intermediate uh, concepts, right?